for two years uh, until the 1st of March this year. So right now I'm independent and I'm a volunteer and I'm allowed to say anything I want. Yes. Um, I, I did a proposal for the conference, um, forgot to look at the agenda and got an email on Wednesday like, oh yeah, your session is on Sunday. Um, so I had little time to prepare, but also yesterday I had new insights that um, did me that made me decide to throw stuff all around. Um, so instead of educating glamps um, and people walked up to me, like Miley Joseph, she said, you know, pe people are treating glamps like um, institutions the same way as institutions are treating Wikipedia as an institution. And it's not about the people. And even three minutes before I grabbed this microphone, Jamie Anstey walked up to me and she's like, yeah, but you, you should have called it Glam Partners instead of training Glams. So um, then I thought about calling my talk Education Profession of Educating Professionals. That's not right. I thought about recruiting honorary consuls. That might be a good title. That isn't, so now I have just time to rant about training and stuff based on my experience in the last two years. Um, I want to talk about four problems and then draw some conclusions and hopefully we will have enough time for a discussion and the session after this session uh, I think it will be uh, uh, quite a good fit in what Olaf wants to do after I'm done. Problem one, when we're working with GLAMS and if we talk about collaborating cooperation. Let me illustrate that with an example. In 2010, the Amsterdam Museum did a content donation uh, on a USB stick. Yes, the content was on the USB stick or somewhere else. And that was great. You know, everybody was happy. It was a large content donation. But the upload progress wasn't as expected. Um, in the first couple of weeks that I started my job, I had to go to the Amsterdam Museum to shake hands with the people that we were working together with. And they were asking about this for, you no, know, in the first sentence. So when is our content going to be uploaded? And I was like, yeah, well, no, the upload team, consisting of only a few volunteers that were able to do these kinds of uploads, they're kind of busy. And no, we're not able to leave a message. There are just a few people that can do this. So yesterday, Alex Hinojo gave a talk in which he said, you should map the interest of GLAMS and the interest of volunteers and only start the projects that, over, that have an overlap. Um, and he asked people to reflect on that. And I say, no, Alex, I'm looking at you right now. No. <laughs> Where did you get this idea? You know, yes, I, I, I love Venn diagrams like these, that if you have volunteers and then glams and there's an overlap, but this is nearly never the case. Most of the times, this is the case, that volunteers have a lot of ideas and stuff that they want to do, and, and, and glams have a lot of stuff and a lot of uh, content that they want to donate or, or ideas that they want to do, and there's a very small overlap. And to illustrate what happened in the Netherlands when I started, when I was appointed as the GLAM coordinator, is that the volunteers thought, well, um, okay, um, he's going to do the work right now. Uh, so I had less volunteers that were willing to work on those projects because they thought that I was going to do the work. Even worse, the volunteers that I had over here in the Netherlands, you know, that's, that's the, the, the professionalizing of the cooperation within the Netherlands, we had a lot of, we had six Wikipedians in residence uh, a year later. But those Wikipedians in residence consisted of those same volunteers that were doing the work before. So there weren't any volunteers left to map on the projects that those glands wanted to do because they, they weren't there anymore. Um, luckily, we also got some what I call honorary consuls. They were called Wikipedians in residence, but those were people that were working for a GLAM and were appointed to start working on these kind of projects. So they weren't part of the community yet, but they got free time to work with the community. 
So mapping those two, that's mostly impossible. And a lot of times you'll see this, that the interest of the community is totally different as the interest of the organizations that you want to work with. Um, hi, one of the uh, Wikipedia's residents that used to be a volunteer before that, working on those projects, he said that when he was training professionals in these buildings that we have the conference right now in, that he was not learning them to edit Wikipedia, but to understand Wikipedia and the limitations and the possibilities of it. And if we look at the differences between a professional and a volunteer, and now this is not a complete list, so if you want to make it complete, we can do that after the conference, but these are some of the differences that you have to think about when you're cooperating with people. That professionals, they respect targets. If you say that he's going to, he or she is going to upload 500 images, most probably those 500 images will end up online. Where a volunteer, you know, it's, yeah, no, I didn't succeed, I didn't have the time, and they are allowed to neglect uh, those targets because it's their own time. So red and green, it's, uh, yeah, there is an opinion in that, but it's not criticism to people. Uh, they both have limited time. Um, a professional is uh, probably uh, working on what needs to be done, and a volunteer works on what he or she likes. Um, a professional is easier to have him or her listen to you. As a volunteer, she or he doesn't have to listen to you. Um, and Another thing is that most likely a volunteer will continue. Yeah. Um, you say a professional works on what needs to be done. <clears throat> when you say a professional works on what needs to be done, you need to remember whose need that you're talking about. Is this the need of the GLAM or the need of Wikimedia? So the volunteer working on what he or she likes may also be working on what he or she believes is important for Wikimedia, which could, of course, be wrong, but it's the right direction. Uh, totally true. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone was in the room when Asaf just gave his talk about how he just became a librarian and that people were putting online, uh, were putting uh, uh, poetry online based on what they had in their house and not about, and, and it was not um, in, in a particular order of what they thought what should be online. Those needs, um, you're totally right. Um, in this case, I'm talking about if you do a cooperation. Um, if, if you want an organization to put everything online that they have in their collection, that's a different need than just extracting those few images that the community wants. Another difference is that a volunteer most likely will be continuing his work after he's done a project, where as a professional he might go do something else afterwards. Um, this is a problem that I really encountered in the, in the last two years. Problem two is that organizations um, are somewhere on this skill in their steps to openness. Um, maybe you've heard about the research that Bayat Esterman is doing about how uh, uh, GLAMs have uh, policies about opening up. A lot of organizations have no clue about what they want to do, if they want to open up and why and why not. So getting them from the first to the second step, from no idea to we have an idea, if we want to donate content, if we want to work with Wikimedia, if we want to work with Wikipedia, maybe formulate an ambition. What do you want to reach in the next months, in the next years? Um, then to really sharing content to make it happen. Once it's there to prom promote the reuse of the content, to monitor the reuse, and to feedback the additions that have been done to the content that has been released. If you look at the work that most volunteers, again, from my personal experience, like to do, is to work on sharing the content. That leaves a lot of work to other people. Um, so, when we're designing trainings, because that's the 
the basis of, of my talk. So how do we educate people to, uh, to start working on projects? Most of the stuff is only focused on the sharing and the reusing, not in the things that have to be done before and can be done afterwards. We've worked on that within Wikimedia in the Netherlands. Um, oh, I'm going too quick for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, this is a, a, a schematic that I uh, designed a, a while ago and right now there's an intern working at Wikimedia in the Netherlands to think this through. What is the kind of education that you want to offer people? What's the kind of course that you want to offer people? From uh, basic orientation, what are the projects, what kind of work is being shared over there, what kind of work is being done over there, to some beginner stuff that you might learn uh, becoming an intermediate, maybe even becoming an expert on, on those platforms and some other skills that you might need if you want to do volunteer work. If you map that um, on what we've offered GLAMS in the last two years, so the courses that I gave, um, those are these, just the basic introduction, um, getting to know Wikipedia and understanding Wikipedia and the community, but also editing Wikidata and the Glam Wiki toolset. Is everybody familiar with the Glam Wiki toolset or do I need to say something about what that is? Nope. You don't know the Glam Wiki toolset? Yeah, okay. No, my, my question is if I needed to explain the Glam Wiki toolset. Um, as a trainer, it was fantastic to see how professionals were using these tools and on one hand um, learning what they could do to, uh, uh, to do content donations themselves. In this case, this is the Glen Wiki toolset. Um, seeing people cheer for the first time that they've done an upload and knowing that they can do not even 50 more, but once they control this process, they can do 500,000 more. That's fantastic. And that you won't get into the situation that I had with the Amsterdam Museum again, that they do a content donation or want to do a content donation and it takes up to four years before somebody picks up the content donation to put it online. We've also did trainings for Wikidata. Just to create some general understanding, what could you do with Wikidata? And to take them from having no idea about what they could do with the Wikidata to an ID and even an ambition, or even to getting to work. Um, and I've been lucky to uh, go to the UK and follow their trainer, tra uh, training for trainer sessions. So to become a better trainer myself. Um, our plan within the Netherlands was to offer training for trainers for our volunteers too. But these trainings are costly. Um, if you really want to have an impact, it's around 1,500 to 2,000 euros a person that you have to put in it to really have some results. Yes, we could organize an afternoon uh, where, from, where someone talks about efficient training, but going through a process to become a better trainer takes more time and takes more guidance and costs more money. And if you want to take people from knowing stuff and understanding it, mastering it and using it, and then become an advocate of all those things so they can promote it to other people, inform other people about it, how it works, support other people that encounter problems, and finally, maybe even become a trainer that start training other people. You know, Olaf um, has been asked right now to train other GLAM colleagues because he knows the GLAM Wiki toolset so well. Uh, so there's, going, there's, there's an environment being created right there where GLAM professionals are looking up each other with experiences and are looking for guidance. Um, it's not that the volunteers totally disappear in that example, but it's, you know, it's, it's not uh, a bottleneck anymore if there are no volunteers available. I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, 
the why how what diagram I'm really a fan of this um, you start with the why with everything you do if you do a co co cooperation um, why are you cooperating how are you going to cooperate and what are you going to do um, I've mapped this to the diagram that I made before um, in those trainings and Without knowing it before, it kind of maps to it that you start with the why. Why do you want to work together? Why do you want to cooperate? How do you cooperate? And in the end, what are you going to do? What is it that you specifically want to reach in your cooperation? We need to think about this better. Um, instead of organizing an editathon and asking people, you come along and we'll learn you how to, we'll, we'll train you how to edit Wikipedia. Because learning to train Wikipedia, that's almost an intermediate course in what I've seen, what some people teach others. And they go beyond those first steps in talking to the volunteers or the professionals to determine what they really want and what they really need to learn. Third problem. Anyone in the room that doesn't know what this means? Okay. Sorry for my language, but this means if, if you file a complaint or if you encounter a problem and somebody replies with this, it's not nice. Because this means read the fucking manual. The problem within Wikimedia projects is write the fucking manual. Because a lot of times there is no manual. Um, I'm a big fan of the Glam Wiki toolset, but when I began, there was no manual. So uh, I, I took some extra time to make stuff like this. And I, I love manuals. I love writing them and I love reading them. You know, if I have to buy a new camera, probably I've read five or 10 manuals before going to a store and trying to find the camera that I want. But there are not a lot of people that like writing manuals and make schematics like this. So that problem is where is the fucking manual. Mostly there is none. Last problem, and I've got a great image of this, is we need to facilitate out-of-body experiences. Yes, I've said that. What I'm referring to is um, this is the structure of some Wikimedia chapters. Um, at least this is the structure of Wikimedia in the Netherlands, and I used to be on the bottom there. The members are the highest in the hierarchy. They think of the plans they want to do next year. They write the proposal and ask for the funding. Uh, the board are some of the members uh, that do more the daily things. Then you have a director, some staff functions, and the people doing the work which sometimes leads to interesting situations, to put it like that. If you read the year plan from Wikimedia in the Netherlands for this year, there's actually no budget for GLAM projects. There are people working on GLAM projects, but it's not in the year plan. Um, why? Because if you are a volunteer, you're thinking about the things that you want to do. And maybe you're not thinking about what those other people want to do, what those glams want to do, especially when you have people working for your organization that are doing the field work, that are in contact with those people. So it's, it's very hard not to only look into the future from your own perspective, but really have an out-of-body experience as an organization, as a volunteer, and then really look and what, take a critical look at what you need to do. And yes, um, there are some variables that we have to take into mind in our thoughts. The, the size of the community, the, the amount of paid support available, um, the, the e-status of GLAMS, so how much GLAMS are, how many GLAMS are, are into sharing, have their collection online, those all determine uh, uh, how much body, external body experience you have to have. These four problems that I've encountered the last two years um, draw me to a couple of conclusions. A, 
we have to reframe our message to professionals. Because a lot of times professionals think cooperation with Wikimedia, yay, we got free labor. And once they have the idea that it's free labor, you get a stampede. And I've been trampled, yeah. I've, I've got a stampede. When I left, I, have to, I had to uh, 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 um, give all my projects to Sandra Fouquenier. And we've stopped at project 40. Because then we came to the projects that were so on the background that might happen. And the glams that showed interest that I went to, to for a cup of coffee. Um, right now, there are over 40 glams in the Netherlands that want to work with Wikimedia in the Netherlands. And we cannot map that to those volunteers because I don't even have 40 volunteers. So instead of free labor, it's uh, do-it-yourself goodness. We've got the manuals, hopefully in the future somewhere, and anyone can do it. And if you can't do it, you're a nobody. So um, with that, also we have to manage expectations. Uh, uh, the, the, the quote that's being shared the most if I talk to Glams is this one. Cooperation is like a dating site. So if anyone on Tinder or other dating sites, you know, some get a lot of attention. But others are looking just for that special one that helps them out. And there is no guarantee that you'll get a date. None. But it doesn't mean you're hopeless. You know, give it time. But cooperation is like a dating site. Conclusion B. Uh, we need to tune the training to the size and professional status of chapters and user groups. Um, if you are devising trainings, most of the times within chapters and user groups, this is the balance. Um, a lot of trainings are about recruiting volunteers and a little is about sharing for professionals. Um, that fits if you are a very small user group or chapter, if you're just beginning. But once you go larger, maybe the balance should be this. And in case of a chapter like the Netherlands, I think this should be the balance. Because um, looking for those volunteers takes a lot of time. Uh, the output is almost zero. And I think the real goal is within the institution, within the GLAMs, within the GLAM partners, within the Netherlands. So I'm not talking about other chapters and user groups. Conclusion C, we need to standardize training material and increase production of, the, of that material. Um, yes, um, there are some great things going on everywhere, but this is not going there yet. And, and even maybe, that's part of the discussion, what role should the Wikimedia Foundation play in this? Sorry, Jamie, yeah. Conclusion D, we need to facilitate out-of-body thinking for chapters and user groups. Um, in the process of, of, of making those plans and keeping an eye on the skill and the size and the amount of professional support that's available for a chapter or a user group, are they only referring to their own ideas? Are they only looking from their own eyes? Or um, are they able to, to see the bigger picture? 